Hey guys, it's Taz from the Latte Library. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Taz. And this video will be basically a summary of what I read last month. In July, this video has come a bit late, but you know, life happens, whatever. Anyway, I read a lot more than I thought I was going to last month and a lot more than I should have, but it was awesome. I read some really awesome books and I also read some pretty average books. I'm going to go through them. This video will probably have spoilers, so let's get straight to it. Thank you to Goodreads for always like keeping a track of what I read every month and in what order because I don't know, I just wouldn't keep track of it otherwise or not in this great way anyway. Okay, so the first book I read last month was The Silent Patient by Alex Mc... is it Michaelides? Michaelides? Not sure. The Silent Patient is like a psychological thriller. I don't actually want to give spoilers away for this one because um, it was amazing. I listened to it via audiobook. Or did I read it? Oh, okay. I need to like work that out. But The Silent Patient is incredible. Nah, I think I definitely audiobooked it. It was insane. I loved it. I saw recently, oh, I don't remember where I saw it, but someone's like, oh, The Silent Patient is overhyped. It's so obvious. But I didn't think it was. I thought it was amazing. Like, holy crap. I recommended this book to so many people as soon as I read it. And I got through it in like two days, which is amazing for me with an audiobook. Normally, I just listen to like audiobooks while I'm at work or like traveling to work. But I listened to it at home because I was like so entranced in it all. It is amazing. If you haven't read it, you need to. I rated this book five stars. I loved it. It was amazing. Yeah, you should read it too. Yeah, no spoilers for that one. It was like the first five star book I'd read in a very long time or so it feels like and it was just nuts. It messed with me. <laughs> it messed with me so much. Like I remember sitting there listening to it and then it all like hit me and I'm like, oh my god. And I remember, I remember just sitting there being like, holy freak. It was crazy. I could talk about it for ages. I love it. So yeah, five stars for that good one. Caravelle. I started this book on the 29th of June and I finished it on the 8th of July. This book, this beautiful book. I'll give it credit. It's beautiful on the outside. Caravelle was one of those hyped up series that I had been trying to avoid for ages. It honestly didn't interest me at all. And then I found myself not knowing what to read, hence why I went to a different genre with the psychological thrillers like The Silent Patient. And I'm like, you know what? I'll try something different. I tried Caravelle. I did. And it's probably one of those books that I should have DNF'd early. But I didn't because I have a fear of DNFing books. I don't know why. I just do. The writing itself is beautiful. Stephanie Garber by the way this is by her writing is lovely it is wonderful it is like sweet and just magical it was great and you know i read that caravel is a series that maybe like the first part of the story is just a bit harder to get into than the second half whereas i found the opposite i thought the first part of the book was really well done i was like really enjoying I was enjoying it enough to keep reading. Um, the situation with Scarlett, Teller, and her father, I found that super interesting because you don't expect that in a YA book. But then, you know, they started with like, I don't know, I just haven't, like, I'm not really an Alice in Wonderland fan, right? So when I kind of felt like it had one of those vibes, like when she first gets to like the island or whatever, and she's like going through, oh, she went to this place with like clocks or something. I don't actually remember, to be completely honest with you, but it was just, I remember reading it and I'm like, oh, really? Okay. And I don't know. I just felt like so much was happening in Caraval and I could not get my head around a lot of it. I liked Scarlet as a character. I thought that was amazing. I liked her dress. That was cool too. But the concept of Caraval, it was just, I give the author credit for like having all these things happen and then bringing them together at the end. But there was just so much happening that I didn't even get it at the end. I'm like, oh, okay, this is weird. Did I miss something? And I felt like I missed something. So maybe it's just me for like, you know, like my fault for not getting it. But regardless, I didn't get it. Like, like there was nothing like bad about it. It's just, I just didn't get it. Anyway, so I finished it and then I read Legendary. Legendary, okay, wait, wait. I rated this three stars and I listened to it via audiobook. Yeah, the, the narrator was really good. The way she portrayed Julian's accent wasn't exactly how I imagined it, but it didn't really matter. Okay, then we have, yes, Legendary. This book, however, so if this is Caravelle, this is legendary. 
It is basically identical in a lot of ways. The writing is very similar, of course, same author, but just the way like, like I feel like she described like the scenery is the same and stuff like that. Um, so Legendary of it, like, it follows Tella and her journey and I guess I found Tella's journey to be a little bit more interesting. As a character, I did find her to be like more annoying than Scarlet. Oh, quickly. What happened at the end in Caravel was like so like, I found it to be so foreign that I couldn't quite believe it. Like, it was just way too far-fetched. Couldn't grasp it when like Tella like jumps out the window and all that, all that stuff. No. I just, I just couldn't get it. Anyway, when I started reading Legendary and it was from Tella's perspective, I was like, oh, uh, uh. just because I found her to be such an annoying character in her parts in Caravel. I'm like, oh, I hope Scarlet's still in there. I guess I could relate more to Scarlet. All right, you know what? Let's just combine the reviews together. Caravel goes for like, what, seven nights or something? And then she's like, in love with Julian kind of thing. Like, it was like borderline insta-love, okay? And it, like, it almost worked for me until I realized. And I'm like, ugh, why? Anyway, back to Legendary, and I'm going to stick to Legendary right now. So you have, like, Teller's perspective, and it starts off really quite... I found it hard to get into. What got me, though, is when she met Jax, and their kissing scene, and that was, like, great. It's pretty hot. And then the aftermath of that, I was like, yeah, this is, this is what I came for. This is going to be great. So that lured me back in and I was like reading it or like listening to it via audiobook and I just found it very interesting. Again, some of it was very like so far like out of my imagination. Jax as a character was interesting. Definitely needed him to like keep things spicy. Dante, cool. Tella, you start to understand her a bit more. It was alright. Ultimately, I rated Legendary as four stars. Why did I rate it four stars? The ending. The ending had me hooked. When Legend leaves Tella there on the stairs I just I like I felt something like I felt heartbroken and that's what I want a book like that's how I want a book to make me feel and it hurt and I was like holy frick there we go like that's a savage move yep this is great not everyone's perfect the storyline isn't all like roses and daisies this is fantastic that was great again the writing's awesome it's just so magical and like it does get a bit repetitive but during legendary I didn't mind too much okay so then I read finale I actually read finale via um, my kindle actually I really enjoyed finale it was weird and everything was in scope of my imagination and I'm not sure if like it's because Caraval and Legendary kind of pushed imagination open a little bit more you know what finale was phenomenal I read like I've seen the photos the paperback or like hardcover look really big and I smashed that book it would not have been long I just could not put it down it was amazing okay so I started it on the 20th of July and finished it the next day which is amazing for me as far as I Actually reading a book goes but I loved it it was different and twisted and although wait wait except at the very beginning right I was like okay Tella has her love triangle and then Scarlet did and I'm like no 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 I'm like this is this is horrible I remember making a note of it and I'm like you've got to be kidding me like just because like they both cannot have love triangles this is not going to work but then they got rid of like Scarlet's one and I'm like this is fine and then I like relax a little bit I'm like this is okay I love Loved finale. The ending made you know what? Like the ending made me want to cry because it was just so like not content. It was just perfect. It ended perfectly, and I think it was the most perfect ending I've ever I've ever read in a book, which says a lot. But yeah, so that was crazy. Would I recommend the series? I don't know. Like Caravel is very unique, and I feel like if you want to try something or read something unique, then go for it. But would I say it's like one of my favorite series? No. Even though finale, I made it a five stars. It was like a three, a four, and then a five. Oh my god, do you like my coffee cup? It says, not until I've had my coffee. It's a cute little um coffee store down the road. And it has like books and stuff. It's like really cute. Okay, I also read The Taking of Annie Thorne by CJ Tudor. I did a video review of this and it was terrible, but I tried. I'm pretty sure I gave the book like 3.5 stars or 4 stars or something. If you do want to know my like proper thoughts on The Taking of Annie Thorne, go check out that video. I would recommend it and it's a nice break from fantasy. Next, oh my god. Okay, so in July, <sighs> um, Becoming the Dark Prince came out. Becoming the Dark Prince by Kerry Maniscalco. Maniscalco? Maniscalco? I don't know. 
know. Sorry. Um, but it's like a novella from Thomas's perspective, and it was wonderful. Like I could have cried. It was just so beautiful, and it's just exactly what anyone would have wanted it to, wanted it to be. So it basically had like scenes from Thomas's perspective from escaping from Houdini, and it was just so wonderful. It was just I rated this five stars. I loved it. I cannot wait. <laughs> I'm so desperate for the like the final book to come out, Capturing the Devil. So excited. I need to read it. I love that series so much. It's just messed up. I, I need it. I need it so bad. Okay, and then I read a contemporary, which is rare for me. I generally do not like contemporary at all. I find it to be cliche and just... No. Anyway, there was like heaps of hype on the hating game and I'm like, okay, and you know, it's becoming a movie I think. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just I'll just have a read. This is a book I should have DNF'd. I really did not like this book. It was cliche. It was annoying. The characters were annoying. Like they were just so annoying and their interactions were annoying. And I just thought the whole thing was annoying. I put three stars on Goodreads, but I probably rate it like 2.5, but you know, you don't have that option. I cannot believe I read the whole thing. I just, I don't know. I, I don't understand the hype with it. I just didn't love it at all. Basically the whole book is about waiting for sex and then at the end they have sex. That's basically it. And I just thought that was weird and annoying. So I would not recommend that book. I'd love to know your thoughts on it though, because I just, I don't know. I just didn't like it. Will I watch the movie when it comes out maybe maybe it'll be that case where the movie was better than the book because that is a thing anyway so after that because I love or I really enjoy the taking of Annie Thorne I read The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor and this book was also hyped up and it I don't know what happened like the hating game was hyped up I didn't love it the Chalk Man was hyped up and I didn't love it I love the taking of Annie Thorne more but I feel like the Chalk Man had so much more hype so I'm like what the hell I rated it um three stars it was weird it was like it was fine but the ending was so flat I don't know it just didn't give me that feeling that like I was expecting kind of thing so three stars and last but not least the final book I read in July or finished in July is Believe Me by JP Delaney and holy freak now this book I bought on sale like at Big W and it was like I don't know it sounded really interesting oh my god what a book I absolutely loved it I loved it so much so that I gave um, the copy to my colleague because she likes that sort of stuff and I'm like you you need to read this. J.P. Delaney is like one of my new favorite authors. Believe Me is incredible. It is twisted. It had me like, oh, I just couldn't put it down. It was insane. Like I remember like one day at work, I was standing by the printer and I was reading it like in a paper bag because I just could not get enough of it. It was crazy. I loved it. I'm going to keep it very spoiler free and just say that you need to read this. Like if you're into psychological thrillers or whatever, you need to read this. It is so messed up. I like, I didn't know what to think. I didn't like oh it was just crazy but I loved it and I just think that like if you want something different to read besides like fantasy and contemporary whatever you need to read this book even though I rated it four stars I still would say that it was like it was somehow my favorite read of the month so that's my July wrap up I read nine books which is like probably my record for a month I'm pretty proud I'm pretty impressed but like my novel was put on the back burner for sure which is not good because I'm finishing it this month anyway thank you for watching please let me know down below in the comments what your favorite book was that you read in July. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. See ya!